Hi, this is Beth Trapani, and this is the first in a series of webisodes about teaching healthy eating to children, and it's sponsored by MissionHealthyLiving.org, which is funded by the Pottstown Area Health and Wellness Foundation. And my guest today is Allison Carr. She's a registered nurse and health teacher at the Wincroft School in Pottstown, which is a traditional private K-8 to school. Yes. So, Allison, thanks so much for being with us today. You do a program called Fresh and Local Fridays, and that's funded by the the Pottstown Health and Wellness Foundation. Tell us about the program. Yeah, we've done it for two years now and we're fortunate enough that the Pottstown Health and Wellness Foundation has, you know, given us the ability to provide this. We, I, every, every Friday in the cafeteria, or I should say once a month in the cafeteria, I demonstrate how to make a healthy snack because we were seeing a trend where they're bringing in Doritos and um, things like that for a 10 right. o'clock in the morning snack. So I showed them how to make fresh snacks and really stress the importance of things that are locally grown because it's very helpful to you but also it's, it affects the whole community. And then I give samples and they, they try them, they love them. Was it hard initially to get kids to, to try some new things? And, and we're talking about produce. We're not talking about, you know, homemade chips that, unless it's kale chips. Right. I, I was just going to say the kale trip. Kale chips were very hard to get them to try. Have you ever made them? You I bake have. them? Yes. <laughs> they were very resistant, um, but they wound up trying them and liked them a lot. They're really good. Um, so also sweet potato chips. We baked them, didn't fry them, because um, you can buy the sweet potatoes locally. And um, yeah, they really like them. So, so in general, you had a population of kids that were eating carbohydrate-heavy snacks. Yes. And so the goal is to get them to try some, some produce, produce and some other things that because, are healthier. Right, and as a parent, I would always buy produce and fresh things, and the kids would, you know, it was very hard to get my kids to eat them. So I wanted them to know that I spent a lot of money on this. They don't last. You need to realize that these things cost money, and you need to eat them if mom gets them for you. What, what was the reaction from kids initially when, you, when you, you, know, you bring in new things? Maybe this is food that they've never even had before or they believe that they inherently have an aversion to vegetables. What kind of, what kind of reaction or feedback did you get? Well, too, it, it was really neat because we had it in the cafeteria, so they're all excited and they're, it's this big deal. There's a set up there where I want to see what that's about. So they would go up and look at it. So when it was the kale chips, they were green and they sort of were like Ew. green, crispy, crunchy. Right, but then you know Sally would take some, so then it was a trickle down effect. They would at least take it, and then they would try it, and they wound up really liking it. So, fruit, yeah. For the most part, did you find that that kids did like what you saw, what what you were giving them to try? Yes, the edamames too. The you know they're not locally grown because we you know here in the winter we have a little bit of a hard time getting right. certain things. So right. I did that. Some of them were not too keen on that, although they're more popular. Um, they seem to be really popular now with people. How do you move from trying something once a month in the cafeteria to getting that to be part of what they bring for snacks and really changing their diet at home and, and for at school as well? Yeah, I, when I started this two years ago, like I said, I thought that um, I thought it would take, you know, by the end of the year, everybody would bring, be bringing in these healthy snacks. Um, but I see some very slow gra gradual changes and also with the staff and, and the faculty. Um, so I, I sent out a survey to parents and at, you know, one of them said, are they asking to bring healthier snacks? And, it, and you know, when I put it all together and looked at it, we're definitely making improvements. So I think that we're gonna just continue um, to, to introduce new things and new ways of preparing them. Okay. How, how can parents take what you're doing in school and, and bring that home and incorporate that? Because it's, it is really hard. I have kids, you have kids. If, if anybody watching this has kids, you understand how very challenging it is to get them away from goldfish crackers and, and things like that for snacks. What you learn in school is great, but it has to be brought home and reinforced at home. Right. So we really make it easy for parents. We put these wonderful recipes up on the computer, online rather, and we also send them home. So we really push parents to make these things with their children at home. And if children are involved, 
with making it. They, you know, tend to really eat it. So that would be one of your tips for parents is get your children involved with the process. Yes, and reading labels in the supermarket. I always stress there's a big push for that now. Um, also to know that, you know, marketing companies, they're, they're in it to make money, right? right. So you, um, they don't have to have your best interest at heart, so don't fall for all the gimmicks. That's what I say. Just read the labels. Okay. How do, how do you teach kids to start to become better consumers? Oh, that is major because, uh, you know, they really, they're sponges at this age. That's why the commercials are all geared towards them. So I bring in empty cereal boxes and things like that. We talk about how they calculate, uh, depending on the age group. Right now I have 10-year-olds, so we can talk about how you get the grams of fat. Um, three grams and you know where they come up with the calories and the science and the math behind it and then also you know you teach them things like the first ingredient listed is is the highest amount that's in this um, you know really read they're very interested yeah. and I, I guess for a younger child looking at ingredients in terms of sugar not being one of the primary right ingredients. one of the first ingredients looking at the grams of sugar also looking at words like um, refined sugars and and um, fortified, if something's fortified, that it's added, and right. sort of teaching what that means. Allison, what would you say to a parent who says, oh, this is all well and good, but my child just doesn't like vegetables or anything green? What do you do? <laughs> well, as we were talking earlier, try not to cave. Just try to be strong and keep on putting that in front of them and stressing that they eat a rainbow of food. Um, I don't give my kids the option. They, it's not negotiable. Okay. And that's, it's very, very hard, I know, and we have many a battles. I have three kids, and we battle, but it's not an option. Right. I've found for myself, there's always something that they'll eat um, that, that's healthy, and if I, you know, make sure that that's a part of every meal, that makes That's a true. Carrots seem to be the favorite. Right. But I need to get greens in there, so broccoli. And now my daughter loves it. She used to not like it at all, but now she likes it, so I'm hoping to. And do you see that in the school, that there's a change sometimes that in kindergarten a child might not like something, but parents shouldn't write it off because as they grow they may? Yes, and we are offering very nutritious food. We just got a salad bar. It is the most popular, popular lunch there. Everybody loves it. They get to put their own toppings, um, and they're very healthy toppings. So that has been really popular. It's, you know, a lot of times you really just introduce it, you'd be surprised um, at what they will grab onto. And with kale chips, my kids loved them because they, they said chips. Chips. <laughs> they didn't right. care that they were green, but that was my children. I found a, a broccoli soup that my son liked, and, and I, instead of calling it broccoli soup, we called it creamy greeny. Oh. And so now he asked for it's creamy clever. greenery. You have to use your own marketing. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's right. Terrific. Well, Allison, thanks so much. It must be rewarding to know you're making a difference. Thanks for having so, me. Thanks. And again, this is the first in a series of webisodes sponsored by missionhealthyliving.org, which is funded by the Pottstown Health and Wellness Foundation.